Friends, one of the great needs of humanity has always been to get well and to keep well physically. And today, I'm going to talk about spiritual mind healing and how we may best cooperate with medical science in keeping the patient in a position to help himself while the physician takes care of his physical needs. Spiritual mind healing is an interesting and a very important subject, and it is something we all want to know more about. Just as everyone wishes to be happy and successful, so everyone wishes to be well. Today we are hearing a great deal about psychosomatic medicine, which means body-mind relationships and a great deal about the part our thought and emotion plays in our physical well-being. And now let us consider the influence of faith to our health. When we speak of the part that faith and prayer play in physical health, we are not denying that people are sick or that they need medical or surgical attention, but rather we are trying to find out how best to help the physician and the surgeon in their attempt to keep us well. If we are in to enjoy the best possible physical health, we must learn how to combine the arts and skills of science with prayer and faith. Any doctor will tell you that he prefers to have a patient who has faith, and the more faith one has, the better his physician can work for him. For man is more than a physical body and he is more than a mental mechanism. He is also a living spirit. And just as modern psychosomatic medicine is telling us that we can hardly find out where the mind begins and the body leaves off, so we may add that we can hardly tell where the spirit begins and the mind leaves off. For spirit, mind, and body are closely related with each other. You are really a spiritual being right now, having a mind and using a body. Life has given you a body to use, a mind to think, and a spirit to act. When we find the right relationship between spirit, mind, and body, we shall see that physical healing ought always to be closely tied in with faith, with prayer, and with spiritual meditation. Spiritual mind healing means that we keep our mind open to spiritual power, that we actually believe that God is right where we are, and that a power greater than we are can be called upon, and that it will always respond. In actual practice, this would mean that you take time each day to sense and to feel the divine presence around and within you. In order to do this, it seems better to reduce your thoughts to a few simple statements or affirmations, such as saying, God is right where I am. Divine life flows through me now. I am one with the presence and the power of the infinite. It is certain that you and I did not create ourselves. Therefore, we must be the result of a power greater than we are. And only in drawing closer to this power, which is greater than we are, can we hope to maintain a physical well-being. It is now known that many of our physical troubles can be traced to emotional conflicts deep within the mind. These conflicts arise largely from a sense of insecurity, from the feeling that we do not really belong to life. And here is where faith plays such an important role perhaps more important than any other one single mental attitude. Faith produces calmness. It establishes a sense of being one with a power greater than we are. And it does more than this. It actually opens some place in the mind which permits the circulation of spiritual energy through the physical body. In doing this, we need never deny that we are sick or that we need physical help. For it isn't the denial of life in any of its forms that gives us the power to live. It is not the denial, but rather the affirmation of the presence and the power of spirit in us that helps us. 
And so you should try to keep your mind open to this thought and consciously entertain it a hundred times a day, that it is the spirit that is circulating through you. And since the action of the spirit cannot be obstructed by anything outside yourself, when you do keep your mind open to it, it will flow through you, for this is its nature. And now let us consider some definite mental attitude you might entertain. For we should not keep this vague or up in the air, but rather bring it right down to earth and into our everyday experience. If you watch yourself carefully, you will be surprised how many times every day you are denying the influx of life. For instance, when you say, my poor head, or my weak heart, or my bad circulation, you are not helping matters any. So all of these statements should be reversed, and for every denial, there should be an affirmation. These affirmations should be reduced to simple thoughts, and then they should be consciously used. For instance, there is one heart, one rhythm of life, one pulsation of living in everything, and you should affirm that you are part of this rhythm. God's heart is undisturbed, and in your thinking, you should tie the action of your heart back to the great heart that beats in rhythm and in harmony with everything. This should be, there should always be a complete cooperation between the physician and the patient. To the doctor's skill is added the patient's faith, for really what a physician or a surgeon does is to try to help the body to keep it in tune so that the natural healing currents of life can flow through it. Perhaps a bone needs to be set, or a physical obstruction removed. This is a mechanical process, and the science of surgery has methods for doing this. But the doctor knows better than you and I do that his chief function is to assist nature. He cannot inject a sense of well-being. He is in the same position that you and I are doing everything he can to assist a power greater than he is, a power greater than we all are, to establish its own rhythm in us and to perform its own function through us. The best patient is the one who has the greatest faith, and the person the most likely to get well and keep well is the one who daily practices using his faith. He practices using it through making definite affirmations which prepare his mind to receive the power and the energy of the living spirit. To believe in God is the most natural thing in the world. Indeed, it is far more natural than it is to disbelieve in him. To accept life is easier than it is to reject it. And if we train ourselves a little, it is just as easy to affirm as it is to deny. And now suppose we reduce this to a few very simple methods. Suppose you don't sleep well at night, but turn and toss until finally a sleep and rest seem impossible. If you are troubled with insomnia, why not take a few moments each day and get very quiet and still within yourself and sort of forget all your troubles if you have any and say to yourself, I have complete confidence in life. I do believe in the presence, the power, and the activity of something greater than I am, right where I am, now, today, tonight, and always. I sleep in peace and wake in joy and live in the expectation of good. It is natural when I sleep that the restoring power of life should flow through me. It is natural that I rest, that I sleep peacefully. It is intended that I awake refreshed and renewed in mind and in body. Now, of course, it isn't the particular words you use that make your affirmations effective, but the deep, simple sincerity of your belief. And so, you see, you cannot divorce this from faith in life, faith in yourself, and faith in God. Your statements should be made in faith.
and in a faith in something greater than you are. If you do this a few times each day, I am sure you will be happily surprised at the results. And we are also told to pray for one another, for faith reaches way beyond our personal lives and can react on others as well as in ourselves. Why don't you try this sometime? Try it for someone else. And instead of saying, I sleep in peace and wake in joy and live in the expectation of good, say he or she sleeps in peace and wakes in joy and lives in the expectation of good, actually believing your affirmation believing that they are the truth about the person of whom you are thinking. Now you are not trying to influence this person or control his mind. You are not suggesting anything to him. You are merely coming to an inward feeling about him. And I look forward confidently to the day when the physician, the psychiatrist, and the one who uses spiritual power will all cooperate. Each will understand the other, and they will all find that they are trying to do the same thing. The physician to the body, the physician to the mind, and the physician to the soul. All are cooperating with the great physician who alone has the power to give life. Just as the physical body and all physical objects are operated upon by a law of gravitation, which holds them in place, so I believe the mind can be operated upon by a spiritual energy which is just as real as any other force. We are not that power, but we can use it. The power is greater than we are, but it does flow through us. It shouldn't seem any more strange to think of spiritual powers than of physical ones, and no doubt they operate in much the same way, the only difference being that physical powers operate directly upon physical objects, and spiritual powers operate upon the mind, which in its turn operates through the body. It is in this way that we bring spirit, soul, and body together. This is why the Bible says that we are spirit, soul, and body. You see, this statement does not deny the body, but includes it in a larger system. It doesn't call for a denial, either of the body or the mind, but adds the idea of spirit, for you are a living spirit right now. This is the way God has made us, and we cannot change our own natures. There is an ancient Chinese teaching which says that man has a physical body, a mental body, and a spiritual body. And thousands of years before it was discovered that the blood circulates, this ancient Chinese doctrine said that it is impossible that there should be physical health without a proper circulation through the physical body. But the story goes on to say that there cannot be proper physical circulation unless there is proper mental circulation, that the two are intimately tied together. And our Chinese sage said that there is also a spiritual body, just as St. Paul said there are bodies celestial and bodies terrestrial. And just as there must be a circulation in the mind, so there must also be a circulation of the spirit in us, if there is to be a whole man. This is the meaning of spiritual mind healing, which is not a denial of the body, or is it a denial that we are ill? It is rather an affirmation that just as the mind and the body are tied closely together, so the spirit and the mind have a close relationship with each other. If we keep it as simple as this, we shall better understand what Jesus meant when he said it is the spirit that quickeneth. And we shall be cooperating with all the forces of nature, the physical, the mental, and the spiritual. But because of our ignorance, we have accepted the physical forces, but not the spiritual ones. Now we need to unite the whole thing 
in one system. Keep our head in the clouds and our feet firmly planted on the earth while the mind accepts the simple fact that we live and move and have our being in the living spirit, that it flows through us, as the ancient Talmud said, closer to us than our own neck vein. Now, Dr. Holmes brings you his meditation on physical wholeness. Every part of your body is made of spiritual substance. There is a spiritual body which cannot be sick. There is a body within you now which is spiritual. It is the mind that blocks the emanation of this spiritual body through the physical form. Jesus knew that there is a spiritual body and a perfect body. Seeing this perfect body instead of a diseased form, he was able to heal every manner of illness. When you say that your body is spiritual, you are not denying your physical body. The physical is included within the spiritual. If the spirit has seen fit to express itself through a physical universe and to give you a physical body, it would be absurd to think of your body or your environment as an illusion unworthy of your attention. Rather, you should think of them as things of joy. Every statement you make about your body or belief you hold about it, which causes the mind to accept spirit as the substance of your body, tends to heal. Say to yourself, my body is a temple of the living spirit. It is spiritual substance now. Every part of my body is in harmony with the living spirit within me. The spirit of this divine life flows through every atom of my being, vitalizing, invigorating, and renewing every particle of my physical body. There is a pattern of perfection at the very center of my being, which is now operating through every organ, function, action, and reaction. My body is forever renewed by the spirit. I am now made vigorous and whole. I possess the vitality of the infinite. I am strong and well. The life of the spirit is my life. All of its strength is my strength. Its power is my power. Every breath I draw is a breath of perfection, vitalizing, upbuilding, and renewing every cell of my body. I am born of the Spirit. I am in the Spirit. I am the Spirit made manifest.